Disney's live-action remake of one of their most treasured animations, Beauty and the Beast, must have been a formidable challenge for the filmmakers as they had to decide how to reimagine iconic characters, scenes, songs and locations from the 1991 Oscar-winning movie. yippee ki -yay, movie lovers, it's Jan here, and in my last video I revealed some incredible facts you probably didn't know about Disney's animated classic. But now in this video, I want to let you in on some amazing secrets and facts about the making of the new live-action Beauty and the Beast. Costume designer Jacqueline Duran tested lots of different shades of yellow on camera before choosing the final colour for Belle's ball gown. Once that was decided, the dress took 180 feet of satin organza, 3,000 feet of thread, over 2,000 Swarovski crystals and more than 12,000 hours to make. And gold leaf filigree was also printed on the top two layers of the gown in a design which matched the ballroom floor. As for the dress that Belle wears right at the end of the movie, the print for that was actually based on an original 18th century apron that the film's costume designer bought during her student days. The household objects like Lumiere, Cogsworth and Mrs Potts were brought to life using a time-consuming mix of computer-generated effects during post-production and solid models during on-set filming. For example, a real version of the wardrobe garderobe was built and rigged with pulleys and various devices so she could move on set. But when we see garderobe dress bell, that was created thanks to the magic of visual effects in post-production. As for Lumiere, the filmmakers wanted to incorporate actor Ewan McGregor's personality into the singing candelabra. So they used performance capture technology to film McGregor moving and dancing how he thought Lumiere would. Also, before filming began, McGregor and the other actors who played the Enchanted characters recorded their dialogue so it could be used as a guide for the cast and crew during the actual shoot. So when Dan Stevens was filming a scene with Lumiere, for instance, he was acting opposite an LED light on a stick and hearing Ewan McGregor's pre-recorded voice. Then during post-production, McGregor and his fellow Enchanted character actors recorded their dialogue again so it matched the tone of what was happening on screen. Apparently, the most difficult object to design, according to director Bill Condon, was Mrs. Potts. Although the animated version of the character has a spout for a nose, Condon told The Hollywood Reporter that when they tried that for the live-action version, she ended up looking like a pig, and he added that there was no way to make that spout nose appealing in three dimensions. When you see the servants in their human form, do look out for how their costumes and hairstyles mirror their appearance as enchanted objects. For example, the buttons on Cogsworth's human costume have Roman numerals on them, just like his clock face, and the design on Cogsworth's waistcoat and epaulettes also echoes the pattern we see on him when he's a clock. And if you look at his hairstyle, you'll notice that it's inspired by the shape of Cogsworth the clock's head. Bringing to life the Busby Berkeley-style song and dance number Be Our Guest was a massive challenge that took the film's crew six months to prepare, one month to film and more than 12 months to finish. When I spoke to director Bill Condon recently, he said that initially they did consider creating the Beast using prosthetic makeup, but because that wouldn't have allowed a subtle facial performance to come through properly, they didn't pursue that option too long before deciding to go high-tech and combine physical and facial performance capture to bring the Beast to life. The physical performance capture part involved Stevens acting alongside fellow cast members on practical sets, which was anything but easy as he had to wear 10-inch metal stilts, as well as a prosthetics muscle suit that weighed 18 kilograms, and a grey lycra bodysuit covered in visual effects markers. And beneath all that, Stevens also wore a special cooling vest which the crew plugged in between takes to help regulate his temperature. The second part of playing the Beast took place later and began with Dan Stevens' face being covered in phosphorescent makeup, which looks blue in ultraviolet light. With his special makeup on, Stevens then acted out all his scenes again, but this time he did so from just the neck up, sitting alone in a booth surrounded by cameras to capture his facial performance, which the movie's VFX teams used to give life to the Beast's face on the big screen. Belle's hometown of Villeneuve was built on the huge back lot at Shepperton Studios and was the movie's biggest set, measuring over 28,000 square feet. And that size was certainly necessary for the film's first musical number, which features over 150 extras, hundreds of animals, 28 wagons and a myriad of highly detailed props and set decorations. And when it came to designing the fictional town's look, the movie's production designer took inspiration from a village in the south of France called Conque. The film's story is set in mid-18th century France, so for the look of the Beast's castle, the art department was heavily influenced by the very ornate Rococo style popular during that period, and which included lots of intricate designs, curved shapes, plant motifs and gold. As for the castle's ballroom, that features a 12,000 square foot faux marble floor, with a pattern that was actually inspired by the ceiling design in a Benedictine monastery in Bavaria, Germany. 
and the ballroom's ten huge chandeliers are based on ones from the Palace of Versailles in France. The set for the enchanted forest around the castle features about 20,000 icicles, a frozen lake, real trees and a pair of 29-foot-high ice gates. It was built on Shepperton Studios' biggest stage, which measures over 9,500 square feet, and it took the movie's crew 15 weeks to make it. Before filming began, director Bill Condon worked one-to-one -one with each of his actors to fine-tune their characters' personalities and backstories. After that, the cast stood a table read of the full script, and they even performed some of the musical numbers in full, giving the read-through the feel of a live concert for the movie's crew. By the way, that musical read-through took place on the 15th of April 2015, which coincidentally was also the birthday of Emma Watson, who plays Belle, Luke Evans, who plays Gaston, Emma Thompson, who plays Mrs. Potts, and Nathan Mack, who plays Chip. Now, have you seen Beauty and the Beast yet, and do you like how it's been adapted? And were there any scenes, costumes, or songs that you especially enjoyed in the new movie? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is really appreciated. And I've got more Beauty and the Beast videos on the way, including a chance to win this awesome Disney hardback book. So do subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss my next Beauty and the Beast video. And in the meantime, check out these other videos you might like by tapping or clicking the screen here. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!